Hello, good morning, everybody. It's another beautiful morning in New York, uh, United States. Uh, my name is Daniel Aniliba, and I'm coming your way today also with an exciting episode uh, on our EB2 National Interest Waiver Green Card Do It Yourself. Uh, like I said, I have done a lot of videos, training videos on how to file your own green card uh, uh, using the EB2 NIW category. So if you have not gone through some of our training videos, uh, please, I will, I'll kind of encourage you to do that because it's going to help you a lot. And I've also found instances where people actually contact me uh, for me to share my views on their petitions before they actually submit it to USCIS. So if it's something that you want me to do, don't hesitate to shoot me an email or reach out to me anywhere uh if you go to my video trainings my emails are there my contacts are there you can also con uh, reach me anywhere on fiverr uh linkedin you can find me anywhere so that is one thing i want to put across so today we are going to do another exciting episode on eb2 national interest waiver you realize that from uh, our last episode we were looking at how uscis actually approved uh, EB2 new green cards. See, when you file your green card with the end in mind, uh, you, you, you start to have a successful petition because you know what the officer is looking for. Therefore, you, you kind of become proactive in providing those evidence in advance so that you don't wait to get RFE. You don't wait to get a request for evidence before you actually fill a particular loophole or a gap in your petition. Uh, at times when I see a lot of different petitions, people send me their petition, and I look at the, pe I did and you see that at times the person is missing an important prong test, which he has not satisfied, or even it may be that he has stated something, the person didn't even provide evidence. So uh, so it's very much important that as you have a second look, or let's say an independent eye go through your petition to actually pinpoint certain mistakes, which can save you hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars down the road, so that you don't wait until actually your petition goes into the ruins before you actually seek help. So that is one thing. So we have been looking at how immigration officers approve EB2 national interest waiver cases. And let's have a recap of what we actually did uh, for last week. So without wasting much time, I'm going to kind of share my screen. Uh, Okay, so let me share my screen so that we can actually have a recap of what we did. So last week, we were actually looking at this model of how uh, USCIS officers uh, follow to actually uh, approve or deny a case. So I'm just going to have a quick uh, summary of it. Then we will begin looking at certain AAO decisions. I mean, when people's petition gets denied, uh, they, they file for appeal. This appeal usually do not go to the immigration officer who denied your petition. It goes to uh, a decision board, which is the AAO Administrative uh, Appeals Office, uh, who are in charge of actually uh, reviewing the decision the officer did, whether the officer erred or you actually erred in filing your petition. So from now on, we'll be looking at a lot of these decisions, and these decisions are going to help you a lot. So it will help you to know where you stand and where you are falling short in terms of your own petition. So if you look at it, you realize that this is what we did last week. We look at the framework which officers follow to actually adjudicate a case. So the first thing we look at is that the officer look for advanced degree. Do you have an advanced degree in the case of master's or PAB or a bachelor's plus five years experience? That constitutes an advanced degree. And even if you don't have a bachelor's with five years experience and can still document some exceptional ability in some kind of skill or talent, uh, it, it doesn't actually disqualify you at all. You can also equally have the opportunity to file this green card. Uh, but that means uh, you have to go extra mile. You have to really convince the USCIS officer that in fact you are the best of the best, the top of your field, uh, to be able to overcome that barrier. So that is it. Now, after advanced degree, you ask yourself, does that mean everybody with advanced degree gets approved? Uh, not everybody. If everybody with a master's or a PhD should be getting approved, then at least half of the world will be residing in the United States. But a lot of people have an advanced degree. Beside your advanced degree, the officer wants you to go a step further to documenting or satisfying a three-prong test. And what are these uh, three-prong tests? The first prong is that uh, has the applicant show that the field has merit. Uh, you know, does your field have merit? Does your field have national interest? 
I talked uh, detailed about that in my previous videos. Please, if you have not subscribed, I would advise that you subscribe to this channel so that you can easily get notifications whenever we release new videos which are going to help in your own filing of your own green card. So after officer also identified that, in fact, this applicant has satisfied the first month test, he goes on to the next one. That uh, has the applicant show that he or he, he is well positioned. Now, let me let me explain this one further. The first prong test has to do with the merit of your field and the national interest. At that point, you are not beginning to talk about yourself. You are talking about your field. So the emphasis on the first, first prong test should be your field of endeavor. How important is this? So the merit, the national interest. Are there any news generated in the U.S. concerning these fields? Are there any discussions going on? Are there any government offices funding this field or projects in this field in any way? That is the national interest. So that's not a, a place to be start talking about yourself. So when you talk about the field and the officer gets satisfied, then you go to the next one, your petition, which is the uh the second one, the prompt test two. Now with the prompt test two, the emphasis is shifted from your field to you, the applicant. So it says that has the applicant shown that he is well positioned to advance the career in the United States. So you see that right now it has shifted from the field now to the applicant. Most of the time, if you are filing your petition, this part will be the chapter three. Uh, the first chapter will be your advanced degree. Chapter two will be your national interest and merits, which is the prong one. Chapter three is going to be your exceptional ability. Uh, have you positioned yourself? So that is one thing you have to keep in mind. Now then, the chapter four, mostly this become my chapter four. On balance is, is the waiver of job offer requirements in the U.S. interest. People leave this out a lot, and at the time it comes back, back to bite them. So that is also one thing that you should document is the waiver of a job offer in the U.S. interest. How do you document this thing? On this point, you are looking at you, the applicant, compared to a U.S. citizen. How better are you than that U.S. citizen in terms of experience, in terms of qualification, in terms of certifications? How better are you in terms of that? And even why is it that you cannot get a job directly to file for a green card for you? You have to explain that. Because it could be that some jobs actually require U.S. citizenship, some job employers are not sponsoring green cards, whatever it is, and find evidence to prove. You see, evidence is the rule of the game. Even if you have to, if you have to go to Indeed and look for some of these jobs, which they say that we don't sponsor visa for foreigners, still print those jobs and use as evidence. Okay, so all these things are way of documenting Chapter Four. People don't do this thing, and they kind of come back and they kind of get RFE and they don't know how they're handling it. So take note of that. And one thing you have to know is that when you don't satisfy this thing, it's not a straight denial. The officer gives you opportunity to redeem yourself by issuing RFE. So whenever you are not meeting any of these prong tests or any of these decision levels, the officer is going to issue a request for evidence. And this request for evidence gives you a second chance to explain that weakness or to document that weakness in your petition. Uh, that is one thing that we uh, we talked about uh, through our last uh, our last episode, and this week that's the summary I can give. So this week we are going straight to look at some of the AAO decisions and how some of these decisions actually uh, go, some of these decisions were made or how the petition got denied. Which point on this decision tree was a person lacking? And that is what our successive videos are going to be based on. We have been taking these decisions and analyzing them decision by decision, especially decisions involving national interest waiver cases. I'm limiting to national interest waiver cases. There are a lot of decisions on the USCIS website. I'm only limiting to the national interest waiver cases. So let's look at this, uh, this first one that I want us to look at. Uh, so this is an applicant who filed an EB2 national interest waiver petition and it got denied. And he said, no, he deserves it. The officer is wrong in a decision. Therefore, he filed an appeal. Okay, yeah. Now, appeals, don't get me wrong. Appeals can be won. At times, some decisions, appeals can be overturned. When I, we come across some of these decisions, you can see that certain cases, they say on 9% of some most of these appeals are overturned, only 9%. Uh, so you also have to take that into consideration. So if you're going for appeal, make sure that your, your appeal is stronger. Well, at times, you don't lose anything by filing an appeal, but... Uh, if you don't have a case, then you spend you should spend more time actually refiling your petition than actually filing an appeal because there's no point riding a dead horse. Okay, so uh, let's look at this person, what he was trying to do. Uh, this appeal decision was given on September 23rd, very recently. Uh, so the person filed for I-140 immigrant petition for alien worker, advanced degree, 
exceptionality and national interest waiver. Okay, so the petitioner is a public relations manager. So the individual is a PRO, some a public relations officer or public relations manager, seeking preference as immigrant classification as a member of profession holding an advanced degree. Okay, as well as national interest waiver of the job requirement. So that's the EB2 national interest waiver. That is what a person filed. Now, if you look at the second highlighted portion, say that the director of the Tesla Service Center denied the petition. So this petition got denied in Tesla Service Center, uh, concluding that the petitioner do qualify as a member of profession holding advanced degree, but had not established that the waiver of a job offer requirement and thus the labor certification will be in the national interest. On appeal, the petitioner submits additional documents and a brief asserting that she is eligible for a national interest waiver. Okay, so that is it. Uh, the petitioner found something. Uh, sorry, the director, uh, the immigration director said, uh, okay, this person uh, was able to actually satisfy, this person was able to satisfy uh, advanced degree level of the decision. So it could be that this person have a master's degree or a PhD in public relations or a bachelor's plus five years experience. But the officer said that the person failed to document uh, that this field is in the national interest or a waiver of a job requirement is in the national interest. It could be that the officer is actually having fault with this level or even at this level. Most of the time, the person failed to document prompt as one, obviously, it comes back to still bite uh, to prove that this one too is also missing because they have something in common. They uh, unbalanced waiver of job offers in the U.S. interest. Talking about national interest, they have something in common. Okay, so uh, these are the levels which I think the person was having a problem with. Let's go back and look at further analysis. Now, this is the law. I don't really go through the law. This is all explaining the requirements of who qualify for national interest waiver and whatever it is. I don't waste time on it. Mostly, I want to go to the analysis. That is where the decisions were made. Uh, that's how the petition was analyzed. So the director found that the petitioner qualifies as a member. Uh, let me put this one somewhere. Uh, the petitioner qualifies as a member uh, holding of a profession holding an advanced degree. So if you see that this part, the director found that, which is good, satisfying the first layer. The remaining issue to be determined is whether the petitioner has established that the waiver of job offer requirements or labor certification within the US interest. For its reasons discussed below, we agree that the, the director, uh, sorry, uh, Yeah, for, re for many issues, determine is whether the petitioner has established that a waiver of a requirement of job offer and thus labor certification will be in the national interest. For this reason below, we agree that the director, with the director that the petitioner has not satisfied demonstrated national importance of the proposed endeavor. So the petitioner didn't actually demonstrate national importance. That is the problem. Now, Regarding the claim, the petitioner indicated that he intends to continue his career in the United States as a public relations field, in the public relations field, asserting that through her proposed endeavor, uh, he will offer his expertise, okay? He will offer his expertise uh, as a public relations and fund, uh, fundraising manager, uh, professional to assist U.S. companies, who need to implement communication strategy to allow their business grow so and improve their relations with employees, prepare executives to, uh, to public expositor, manage sensitive issues that will affect the available management. So you are just talking about what his skills are, are capable of doing uh, in the United States. So that is what he proposed as a national interest, which to me is not enough. Let's look at it further. The petitioner further explained that her undertaking includes facilitating cross-border business uh, sales projects between the U.S. and Latin America uh, as countries speak Spanish and Portuguese, whatever it is. Additionally, the record includes information about growing demand for individuals with public relations and marketing skills, importance of marketing for the success of business, the challenges that U.S. corporations face in Latin, and the importance of trade, whatever it is. 
so the person included all information about his endeavor as a PRO, how U.S. Uh, need uh, PROs, how uh, U.S. corporations, uh, uh, challenges that U.S. corporations face in Latin American marketplace, especially language barriers. So this is what that the person was talking about. So the petition also provided articles discussing the job outlook for public relations and marketing managers. Recent research regarding ways in which immigrants help business grow and why the United States need more immigrants. The record therefore shows that the petitioner's proposed work as a public relations manager has substantial merit. I want us to take note of this point. Uh, has substantial merit, okay? Uh, okay, so during the review, sorry, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this. Okay, so, uh, Let me close this. Okay, so uh, during the review, the immigration board found that indeed his field has substantial merits. Okay, now let's go to our decision tree and look at this part. Uh, has the applicant shown that field has merits and national interest? There are two things, merits and national interest. You see, the merit part is that you are explaining your career to somebody. If you meet somebody in the elevator and the person asks you, oh, tell me what you do. Sound like elevator speech. What is the merit? What do you do? Okay. What occupation do you find yourself? Okay. Oh, I'm a nurse. Uh, I take care of patients. I, I, I'm in charge of assisting patients, taking vitals of patients, preparing patients for delivery. I do this. I do that. Uh, this That's the importance of what you do. Okay. So the merit is just what importance of what you do to society. And this is what exactly that immigration reviews board, the appeals board actually found out. Indeed, the person has satisfied the merits. Now, but that is not exactly the only thing they want the petitioner to satisfy. National interest is also what they want the person to satisfy. And they said that on appeal, the petitioner points to letters of recommendations uh, supporting, uh, discussing her knowledge, skills, and work experience. But these letters do not sufficient to explain national importance of her fair proposed work. So let's again look at this statement. Uh, this letters does not satisfy the proposed work, uh, the national importance of the proposed work under the first prong. Okay? So you saying that I'm a PRO, PRO will do this, I will do that, I will help companies do this, I will help US companies do that, I will be a mediator between customers and companies and companies and other, other companies, I will say, help keep company information secret and whatever it is. Beside you saying that one, which is the merit, which is accepted, you have to go extra mile to talk about national interest. And I've talked about national interest. I've done previous videos on national interest. I'm not going to go back through that. Uh, go to my channel and look at some of this training, how we document national interest. Look for news articles and explain. Don't only print this article. People actually look at these links and just post them. They know. Read the articles. Analyze articles in, let's say, like one paragraph in an explanation point and add the article as exhibits. Retrieve another article, do the same thing in different areas of how the U.S. government is pushing this profession or pushing this endeavor. That is the national interest. It shouldn't be like, oh, my company, whenever you document national interest and you talk about a company, my company, I'll help a company do this. You're only limiting yourself to a particular company, which is not national in nature. National interest means national initiatives, national funding, national projects, uh, U.S. agencies, U.S. government agencies, U.S. government offices promoting a particular profession or promoting a particular skill. That's what we call the national interest. So you see that still the immigration appeals are finding that this person is actually lacking in this area that we are talking about. Though you know, the person has actually talked about the merits, but the person is still lacking the national interest aspect of it. Okay, now, that is the problem this person is actually facing right now. And until you actually no, or you can actually document this thing, you are not actually moving to the next step because you said that the petitioner skills. So the petitioner on the appeal or when the immigration officer issued an RFE, the petitioner just submitted recommendation letters talking about the skills and whatever it is. 
Now let's look at what the immigration appeals board said. The issue here is uh, the petitioner's knowledge, skills, and experience in the field relate to the second prong of the Danasa. Exactly. Okay. The person has submitted recommendation letters talking about her skills, knowledge, and experience. That is not relating to the first prong. That is something relating to second prong. So you see that instead of the person responding to the first prong, the person actually submitted skills, experience, talking about the second prong. So that means he's even still missing the point, okay? Uh, they want you to talk about the national interest and provide proof of this thing generating news in the United States, generating interest in the United States. That's what they want to see. So the issue here is what are the specific endeavor? Uh, if you look at it, it says that the petitioner's knowledge, skills, and experience relate to the second prong of the framework, which shifts focus from the proposed endeavor to the foreign national. The issue here is whether the specific endeavor that she proposes to undertake has national importance. That is the issue. Does your field has national importance under the first prong? That is what they want to see. But you submitted letters talking about the second prong. So the person missed the points of this RFE in general. So that is one thing I wanted to talk about with this one. So you realize that as the petitioner has not met the requisite first prong of the national uh, analytical framework, the DANASA framework, we conclude that uh, she has not established, okay? We conclude that uh, she has not established eligibility for otherwise merits of national interest waiver as a matter of discretion. Therefore, the appeal was dismissed, okay? So uh, whoever filed this thing actually didn't have an understanding of what they were requesting of him, and they didn't respond appropriately, okay? So uh, take note of that. First prong test, national interest. When they want you to document national interest, please go to our previous videos, subscribe, and look, go through how we document national interest. We have done exciting training on national interest, how we document news on national interest, how you can even, you should even select news articles to support your national interest argument. Don't limit your unique news articles in New York or news articles in Florida. Select multiple news articles. Mostly, I like to deal with federal government agency news because federal government is national, unlike state governments, all right? But if you are talking state by state, then you want to spread the news, one from California, one from New York, one from Montana, another from Florida, somewhere in Colorado. Spread your news articles if you are doing the statewide. But most of the time, prioritize the federal government websites first, federal government agencies, US EPA, U.S. Uh, Department of Commerce, U.S. Department of uh, Human Services. Pro prioritize these areas because these areas give news which are national in nature, okay? So that is first analysis I wanted us to go through. And let us go through the second analysis at this point. So let's look at the second analysis. And what is this person hoping to do? This is also on the September 21st. And... Uh, this is an immigrant petition for alien seeking advanced degree national interest waiver. Of course, our type of uh, petition that we are always looking for. If you look at it, it said that the petitioner is a visiting scholar or a researcher. So this is on the academic side. The one we look first was a professional side. The person is an, uh, a professional in public relations, but this person is on the academic side, a visiting scholar or researcher who seeks second preference immigrant classification as either an advanced degree professional or individual of exceptional ability. So that is what this person is seeking, okay? Yeah. Uh, as a visiting scholar. Yeah, so that is what this person is seeking. Now, after the petitioner has established eligibility of this classification, the U.S. Citizen Immigration Center may, as a matter of discretion, grant national interest waiver if the petitioner demonstrate that the foreign national proposed in DIVIA has merit and national importance. Two, the foreign national is well positioned. And three, on balance, it will be beneficial for the US nation to waive the job of a requirement. So you see that this thing they have even listed here comes back to confirm the decision tree I made uh, at this point for the prong test one, two, and three. Okay? Yeah, that is what they are looking for. If you are not providing it, then of course you have problems with your petition and you are going to actually get uh, probably an RFE. Or maybe if you are not, you are not satisfied, if they are not satisfied, you get a denial. Now let's look at it. The director of the Tesla Service Center denied the petition, concluding that the petitioner 
established eligibility for underlying EB2 classification as a member of person holding advanced degree, the record did not establish a waiver of a classification of job offer requirements will be in the national interest. On appeal, the petitioner says that he merits the national waiver. He further says that the director misplaced facts, uh, did not consider evidence on record, or incorrectly interpreted the precedent case law. So actually, the petitioner is actually saying that the director erroneously denied his petition. Uh, so, of course, if we look at this one, uh, this part that we just look at, then that means that the not established waiver of a job of a requirement will be national interest. This person is also some, some, uh, kind of suffering the same fate. Uh, if we look at it, uh, it could be that this person, uh, let me first uh, kind of try and erase these stuffs. Uh, okay, erase this, uh, erase these things. Uh, okay. So we let's start fresh and see where this person is lacking. So it could be that this person actually meeting the advanced degree parts, which uh, of course we can see from here, uh, but he's having problem with the national interest, national interest, national interest. Throughout these videos that we'll be doing every weekly, we're going to see that a lot of these people are kind of flopping at the national interest level, which is causing their denials, okay? So uh, let's look at it. Let me skip, uh, skip the kind of law and whatever it is. Let me go to analysis. It says that the director determined that the petitioner qualifies as member who hold an advanced degree. Uh, the record demonstrates that the petitioner earned a doctoral degree. Good. So you see that doctoral degree. The petitioner has a doctoral degree, so he has a PhD in economics with major in industrial relations in Turkey in 2003. Okay. So uh, this is where this person earned his PhD, which has been evaluated to be equivalent to a doctoral degree. So he has done his worst evaluation, which is good, uh, evaluating to a doctoral degree in economics from a US university. So when you, are, you earn your degree from outside, you are supposed to do worst evaluation or credential evaluation, whatever it is, to bring your degree or credentials at par to the US standards. Uh, the remaining issue to consider is whether the petitioner is established under the framework now, substantial merit and national importance. This is where the problem is actually coming from. He says that the petitioner submitted evidence that he currently serves as a visiting scholar in the College of Business in some university or whatever it is. In his personal statement, the petitioner described his proposed NDV as conducting research in the field of general management, uh, knowledge management, supply chain, and healthcare management to analyze how organizations can gain substantial competitive advantage of how employees can contribute to this success. He also described his future research plans on the topics of knowledge sharing, innovation, and knowledge utilization, and diversity management. I believe all these things are talking about merits, okay? He proposes to use this research to help the U.S. economy by designing unique knowledge management systems for use in small business to enhance their competitive advantages in market, which will ultimately foster continued innovation, better customer satisfaction, and supply chain management, whatever it is. Now, to support his personal statement, the petitioner submitted a letter of recommendation and three advisory opinions. A letter of recommendation. I have a problem with this one. Uh, you file this petition, you are only submitting one letter of recommendation and three advisory opinions, which let's say together four. I think four is too small. Mostly I do six recommendation letters. So let's look at that also. Uh, as well as evidence of his peer-reviewed publication and citations. Oh, okay. So he has citations and peer-reviewed publications. So you see that not everybody with citations and publications actually get approved. It depends on how you file it, okay? Uh, the letter of recommendation is from a professor in department in some university in Turkey. Okay, describe the petitioner's research contribution to the field of business management and discuss the importance of past research or whatever it is on measuring customer satisfaction. Now, the petition also provided three independent advisory opinions written by some professors. Now, each of the opinions further discusses the importance of global business competition to the American economy and how the petitioner continued research will allow US business to improve performance and gain strategic advantage in the global economy. To demonstrate national importance of his research, the petitioner submitted evidence of this implication to the United States. This include information economic growth programs uh, from US agency 
The petition also provided information from website of this executive office of the president, describing strong, small medium enterprise and focus on business size. Upon review of the initial file, and the director issued a request for evidence. Okay. So after all these things were submitted, the director issued RFE. And what does the director want? Stating that the record did not provide insight as to the petitioner intends to do as a professor. Oh, okay. This is where the problem is coming from. What the petitioner intends to do as a professor. What the petitioner intends to do as a professor. So if you are looking at it very well, uh, the professor, you see, there is difference between your current occupation and what you propose to do, okay? And how his intentions are substantial merit and national importance to the US. You see, at times be very careful about choosing a very broad field. For instance, uh, if I'm filing and I say, okay, I intend to propose my uh, occupation as environmental scientist. When you take environmental scientist, we have people specializing in water research, air research, land and soil research, even we have an environmental sociologist, different branch of environmental science. So which aspect of environmental science are you talking about? So I think the professor was finding problem to actually uh, hone in or let's say dig, dig, dive into whatever the professor wanted to do, specializing in which area of the economics, okay? So, and how his intentions actually going to improve the US interests. In the RFE, the director noted that the record also did not establish that the petitioner was well positioned. Oh, okay. So was well to advance the proposed endeavor and will be beneficial for us to waive the requirement of job offer. Good. So this one also. So you see that this is where the uh, the person, the, the the officer is having problem. Although the petitioner, uh, the petitioner was able to satisfy this level. And the person, the petitioner was able to talk about some merits. Okay. So beside that, uh, you realize that the officer is talking about the petitioner not able to what document that he is well positioned, okay, to advance the career. And even the director also found problem with the proposed endeavor. So the proposed endeavor, uh, what the person wants to do. So whenever you are filing your petition. What you're doing currently is different from what you propose to do in the US. So you should always state in your petition, your proposed endeavor. I am applying for this classification to seek to further the field of social and so in the United States. State that statement so that the officer knows which field you are honing to. Because it's very much important that you choose a specialization, not so broad, but kind of try and limit it a bit so that you can actually become more specialized in your field. But when you talk about it, will be difficult saying that you are filing as a manager. Manager of what? Very broad. Okay, so always have a specialization. I'm filing maybe as a financial manager, specializing in this and that skills. Okay, that is actually going to help the officer to make the decision. So if you look at it, uh, that is the kind of problem the officer was actually talking about. Uh, the RFE actually, the petitioner uh, provide insight, the, the record did not provide insight as to what the petitioner intends to do as a professor and how his intentions are of national importance, okay? In the RFE, the petitioner noted that the record also did not establish that the petitioner is well positioned to advance the proposed endeavor or that it will be beneficial for the United States to waive the job requirement offer. So even that means extending even to this part, there's also problem with this part, okay? Yeah. So you have seen that from this one, the officer is having problems with this. And when they have such problems, it's going to be very difficult because if you are not even able to hone in on your area of specialization, it will be very difficult to even make sense out of this and even out of that. Okay, so that is one thing that you may want to take note of uh, as you kind of filing your petition. Uh, in response to the RFE, the petitioner submitted additional evidence of his publication and citations to his work. He submitted multiple scholarly articles citing his research and discussing his application in the field. Uh, the articles describe how the petitioner research has supported the work of others in the study, uh, in the knowledge of management or whatever it is. He also submitted journal articles to demonstrate that his proposed endeavor supports 
supports the goals of the United States government. The article described the importance of knowledge management for all business. Oh, uh, okay. So is that, um, okay. He also submitted general articles, okay. All right, in the healthcare industry as an impact. Okay, the writer denied the petition. He concluded that the evidence demonstrated that the petitioner met the second prong of the dinosaur. Okay, so when the person responded to the RFE, the director concluded that now he has met the second prong in that he is well positioned to advance the endivia. However, evidence did not establish that he met the first and third prong test. Good. So this is why still the officer still denied it. So in the RFE response, he was able to actually get this one out of the way. Okay. Uh, he was able to actually get this one out of the way, but he was still finding problem with this one and the third prong test. Uh, so you see, that is how the officers actually want to insist to make sure that all the prong tests are satisfied. It will be beneficial to the United States to waive the job of our requirement that delivers education. Regarding the national merit of the petitioners, substantial merit of the petitioners, the director stated that in his decision that beyond the general assertion that the petitioner intends to continue his research in the field of management, the description of his individual lacks specifics. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, specifics into what he intends to do beyond his research. The director cites only the petitioner's personal statement and does not reference analysis or appear to consider supporting material submitted. Okay, so when you file a petition, there's something we call beneficiary work plans in the United States. It's the last two page statement you state to show your plans in the US. Let's say you appear, you are doing research. Out of the research, what is going to happen? Maybe you are doing your research, your research will provide knowledge, scalable knowledge or implementation, uh, implementation stage to some companies. Or maybe you are in the PAD, after the PAD, you are going to apply your knowledge to expand or scale your knowledge to provide certain products to the United States and you intend to document how you intend to do that. Or maybe even you will be seeking a job in some areas where you contribute to, a, to the US in a very greater capacity or some great capacity. So this statement should always be accompanying your petition, which I think all of them were also left out. So that is it. Now, I can go on and on and on, but uh okay so the unbalance it will be beneficial for the u.s to grant a waiver so in concluding that it will not be the national interest to grade okay so this is also the chapter four of what the officer was expecting in concluding that it will not be in the national interest to grant a waiver of the offer requirement and thus with the labor service the director says that the evidence of record is insufficient however he does not cite any specific evidence that the petitioner submitted or described how that specific evidence is sufficient. On demand, if the director determines after reconsideration and analysis that a petitioner missed the first two prongs, the director should evaluate the petitioner's statements and evidence in support of the third prong. Upon a complete review of the entire report, the director should provide a full and complete analysis of whether on balance, it will be in the national interest to grant a waiver of labor certification. The director should consider first, such as whether the labor certification will be impractical or whether the U.S. will benefit from the petitioner's proposed endivia, whether the national interest of the petitioner's proposed endivia is sufficiently urgent, and whether the proposed endivia has the potential for job creation. Okay, so this is the decision of the appeals board. The decision of the director is withdrawn. The matter is remanded for entry of new decision consistent with the foregoing analysis. This is very interesting. Okay. So after the appeals, both sides are not winning yet because the board needs further evidence. You see, the person responded to RFE and the RFE, the person was able to get something out of the way, which is satisfy this one. Okay. And the board also found that the person equally somehow also talked about his merit, okay? So looking at how what the board actually wants, they want the director to withdraw and actually submit some evidence. What the director is saying that the petitioner stated some facts concerning the merits, but these facts are insufficient. But when it went to the appeals, the immigration officer didn't submit these facts, okay? So that means the immigration officer he himself also was failing to uh, give uh, detail, you see? An officer cannot just deny your petition, okay? He also has to say reason why he denied it. So he said that the person submitted insufficient facts. 
But when it goes to the appeals board, the officer didn't bring the fact which is insufficient that the person submitted. So the board is finding decision to even also deny the petition or approve it. So the board has suspended and waiting for further evidence concerning the merits. And this is what the board is saying, that if this person uh, submitted evidence concerning the merits, uh, a national interest tends to actually uh, be overcome, then this one becomes satisfied, this one becomes satisfied. They expect the immigration officer to use discretion uh, to use discretionary uh, instruments to actually uh, consider this part, the third prong test, and approve it. So it's 50-50. This person's uh, decision can be approved or can be denied by its hanging. It depends on the fate of the documents that they are waiting for the immigration officer to submit so that they can actually relook at the decision again. So that is how it is. So you see that it's not all the time that appeals are actually thrown out. Some of appeals tend to hold water. Some appeals too, they just get thrown out. We have seen very interesting two decisions today. Uh, next week, we are also going to look at another decisions uh, and how they actually play into this framework uh, for us to actually know where or what went wrong. So take care of yourself. And yeah, so I'll actually be seeing you uh, hopefully next week as I come on your way again with another episodes on uh, AAO decisions and EB2 national interest waiver. Take care, keep warm. Winter is approaching, weather is very cold. Bye-bye.